Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I want to show you a new project that I've been working on called Markdown X. And this is bridging the gap between people who are not too familiar with Markdown and want to be able to write in Markdown. And it's also just going to make it easier for developers to write Markdown to easily add code blocks and upload images and a bunch of other cool things. So this is built for the tall stack. If you're not familiar with the tall stack, you can go to tallstack.dev. This is built using Tailwind, Alpine, Laravel, and Livewire. Uh, if you're not familiar with this stack, I would highly recommend it. It just makes building out some reactive applications super fun and easier than ever before. So I'm gonna show you how we can install this Markdown X editor in a new Laravel application. So let's jump into it. Okay, first thing is first, we need to create a new Laravel application. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my sites folder. I'm going to say Laravel new markdown dash editor. And after I've created a new Laravel application, I can go to markdown dash editor dot test and I'll see my blank Laravel application in front of me. Nothing too fancy, but let's go ahead and add the tall stack preset. So I'm going to go ahead and just Google tall stack preset and the GitHub repo should be the first one that comes up. And this is a preset that will install uh, Tailwind, Alpine, and Livewire inside of your Laravel application with a simple composer require command. So if we go down to the readme, we can see that we have installation without auth and with auth. And I think for this example, we're gonna go ahead and just choose without auth. So I'm gonna go ahead and include this. And after I've done that, there are a few more commands that we can run. We can run PHP artisan UI tall. And now we can run npm install and npm run dev. And after we've done that, we can go back to our Laravel application. And if we reload, we're gonna see that it looks a little bit different. And this now has the tall preset for our Laravel application. So let's jump into the application real quick. And we're going to go to the resources, views. And then if we have layouts, we have app.blade.php and we also have this base.blade and you'll see that we have app.css that's included we include our livewire scripts our livewire styles and if we were to jump into our app.css actually that's sas app.scss we can see that we've included tailwind in our project so the next thing that we need to do is i'm going to overwrite the welcome.blade.php and include the markdown editor in our project so when you download the Markdown X editor, there are a few files that come along with it. And there's only three files. So you have the config file, and then you also have the Livewire controller, and then you also have the Livewire view, which is inside of this folder. So let's go ahead and copy those files over. First, I'll go ahead and move the config over. So I'm using VS Code, and I can just directly drag and drop these into the according folders. So I need to drop this into my config folder. I will do that. Okay, now I need to add the controller. And if I go into my app, HTTP, we probably don't see, if this is a new project, you won't see a Livewire folder. So you can go ahead and just drag the Livewire folder directly into the HTTP folder. But if you are working with a current Livewire project, you'll probably, probably already have the Livewire folder there. So the last thing that we need to do is go into our resources views and we need to drop the livewire view inside of there so we go to resources views and let's drop this livewire folder right in there okay so now this is super cool let's open up the routes actually the resources views welcome file and you know what how about i just clear this stuff out and this is how easy it is to include the livewire component in your project we'll just say livewire colon markdown dash x and then we've just included it in our project before we can do that we actually need to do the livewire discover so livewire needs to find these components so let's run that command so that's php artisan livewire discover and now let's jump into our bootstrap cache and livewire components and now you'll see that livewire has detected that component so one more thing i want to do is i want to run my asset watcher Okay, and jumping back over to my welcome, I wanna put this inside of a container. So I'm gonna say class equals, I'll say max w of 4xl, and these are all Tailwind CSS classes, so if you're not familiar with Tailwind, be sure to check out tailwindcss.com. We'll say mx auto, and then I think I will have an h1 here, and I'll give it text of 4xl font bold, 
and I'll add some padding Y here. And we'll say, welcome to Markdown X. Okay, so we've got that in a container. Let's go ahead and check this puppy out. Let's go back here, let's reload, and you can see, boom, we have the Markdown X Livewire component on our page. So check this out. We can go ahead and just type some regular text, but we could press the forward slash and we get this nice menu that you can navigate with your keyboard. You can also navigate with your mouse. Uh, you can click on it. So we could upload an image, add a heading, add a list. So let's do a numbered list. Item one, item two, item three, Pretty cool, let's go ahead and add an image. Okay, let me see some images that I have on. Uh, let's see, we have a PNG right here. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I've went ahead and just uploaded that. I can click on preview and now I see the image right there. This probably wasn't the best image. I don't know why that's showing like that weird space in between here. Oh, okay, yeah, that image is pretty weird. It's got like a bunch of white space in it. Let's go ahead and try out a different image. So before I do that, how about I just remove this image right here and I show you that we can also drag and drop images. So I'm just gonna look for an image on Unsplash and maybe we can even just, I was gonna say select the photo of the day, but that, those flowers look a little too girly. Let's say mountain. Mountains never disappoint. Save image as, and let's go ahead and say, photo on desktop. And this is probably going to be a large image. Let me see how large this is. Get info. Oh, 429K. Okay. That's probably because I didn't download the full image. So this works fine. Okay. So I will open up that and check this out. Go ahead, just drag and drop and boom. Now we have that photo right in here in our markdown. So then we can also add some code blocks if we wanted to. So I could say code. And then I can say insert, and this will insert a code block. So now if I go to preview, I can now see that I have my code block. I have the image and let's try out a few more things. So let's go to code pin and let's find a cool code pin that we can paste in. Okay. This one looks pretty cool. Frosted glass. Yeah, that's super cool. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that URL, go back to my editor, and I'm going to say that I want to add a code pin, put that right there, paste in the URL, and check this out. Now we go to preview, we have our image, we have our code block, and we do not have the code pin. And this is because there are things called liquid tags inside of the Markdown X editor. And there are a handful of these that you can write your own parser for, but we will have some of these that you can inject directly into your file. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just end this video because I just wanted to show you how easy it is to install the Markdown X editor. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of configurations, a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, let me actually just show you one thing inside of the config. So let's say that we just wanted some of the default Markdown syntax and we don't want things like CodePen or YouTube. Let's go ahead and go to the config. I think that's Markdown X. We can go down here and we can just comment out these last four. Now we go back here, if I reload, I can see the dropdown and we only have the default, it's kind of like the standard Markdown syntax. And if we also go over here to the help section, you can see that we have all of these listed. And let's go ahead and uncomment this code pin. And if I reload and we go to the help, you can see that we actually have how to embed code pins. And again, in the Markdown X documentation, I'm gonna show you how you can render it whenever you click on the preview. And one more thing actually, before I finish out the video, how about I show you what debug mode looks like? This is super cool. So I can go to my Markdown X component and if I scroll down to the JavaScript, there is a debug flag and I can set this from false to true. And this is if you want to use the editor to build on top of, then you'll have a debug mode where you can use that to write your own functionality. So one of the biggest parts of this editor is tracking exactly where the cursor is at. So if I were to go ahead and press the forward slash, I know where the cursor is at, so I know where to add that dropdown. So with this debug mode, I can actually turn this on. And now you can see that we actually have 
this little marker. We have the cursor start and cursor end. You also get X and Y coordinates for exactly where the cursor is at. So you can see that as I'm typing, the cursor is moving along. So we're actually storing the X and Y position of the cursor. And this comes in really handy if you need to write your own custom functionality on top of the Markdown X editor. But I think that's it for now. I think that's some of the basics that I just wanted to cover. Um, I hope that you're excited about this editor. If you're not, uh, maybe you're not into the tall stack. Maybe you just don't need an advanced Markdown editor, but I'm super pumped about this. It is going to make writing in Markdown super easy and so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in my next one.